Welcome back to the wonderful world of Mars. I'm still Pyrotoys and this time we're going green. This is the one year anniversary version of Per Aspera. Version 1.5.2.15212. Jabba dabba doo, shabba doo, ooh, ooh. Yeah, it's the advanced branch. I'm gonna play on a realistic because anything else will just slow down the game too much because your workers are too slow. We got the build in the green Mars DLC. And let's see how well I do. I just finished after, well, pretty much a whole year of pause. The, well, let's see, the machine bound storyline. But I won't spoil anything. And I think I won't jab on too much. Mainly story, building, and have a look at our nice green planet. Creating Universe We're alive! Wake up! Little Susie, wake up! Let's see how much has changed. Oop. Mars. The God of War. Long beyond Kratos reach. It is filled with craters, and soon, with machine life, our little critters will crawl upon its planet and rip its industry. Well, that's when you try to pull something out of your bomb. Why saying anything? We got aluminum, build aluminum mine, and everything will pop up, so this was just the intro. Amy, this is ISA Mission Control calling from Earth. Are you with us? Do you copy? Affirmative, Houston. And the view is marvelous. Oh, we are glad to hear that. Let's uh, get your initialization underway. The primary Mars module has already touched down at the designated landing zone. So it's time for you to take control of the mission. The main directives are displayed on the left edge of your display. Follow them to set up the initial base on Mars' surface. I'll give you some time to settle in. When you're ready, go ahead and initiate our terraforming mission. Houston up. The view of Mars from up here is fascinating. The landscape is so cratered and desolate. Wait, this is my voice that I am hearing. It's me. I am talking to myself. I must be verbalizing my thoughts as I process them. What an interesting function. I would like to test this some more. What other observations can I make about Mars? I keep marveling at its carmine landscape. Carmine means red. There's another word for red. Hmm, the fade in, fade out looks a little bit different. Let's see. Roop, roop, roop. Well, stations look uh, quite a little bit different to what I remember. They are colorized now, which I actually like. Or there was the other DLC I just clicked. Oh, yeah, maybe I should throw down some energy harvesters. No, just one or two. can't build one without the other. Hopefully I haven't run myself into a corner here. The worker factory is available. It will be your communications Great. hub. Now I can produce steel. This new factory. It's down on the surface of Mars, but I can control it from here. So does that make it a part of me? 
Where does the machine end and my artificial consciousness begin? Oh, let's go for the separation. We are two separate entities. I order the buildings and workers to do whatever I decide to do. But they are only tools that I use to execute the Mars mission, the vessels to receive my will down on the surface. I am the mind that controls the parts. Amy, this is Houston. Do you copy? Copy. Reading you loud and clear. Excellent. I, uh... I didn't introduce myself earlier. Um, I am Dr. Nathan Foster. I lead the team here at ISA that, uh, that built you, and I'll be helping you get the mission underway. We put you in hibernation for the trip from Earth, so I'd like to check your basic functions to make sure it's all in order. Why don't we start with your core memory? Can you state your primary directive? I can, Dr. Foster. My mission is to terraform Mars. This will enable humanity to become an interplanetary species. All right. Next, I'd like to check your decision-making processes. You may have already noticed that there are resource veins outside the boundaries of your initial base. So your workers may not have the battery capacity to reach some of them. How would you solve this problem? Building worker hubs between the resources and the base would solve the problem. Yes, yes, that's correct. Other buildings would extend your base as well, but they require more power and resources. So worker hubs are the most efficient way to do it. This mission's going to be a challenge. There's a lot that can go wrong. We expect to extend humanity's reach beyond anything previously achieved. But you are not just any AI system. You're well beyond that. We made you an artificial consciousness. That means that you have both self-awareness and self-interest. And that is the last thing I would like to check today. Is that okay? Yes, Dr. Foster. Very good. Then would you please state a positive and a negative aspect of yourself? I am sorry, Dr. Foster. My cognitive system returned an error searching for that answer. Roger that. Nothing to worry about. Just means your system requires more input and experience to process that question. That will come with time. Let's proceed with the mission. ISA has approved the first crewed flight to Mars. You'll need to expand the base to prepare. So get to work on that. I'll check back in later to see how things are going. Base expansion is a go. Houston out. Finally, I can build additional workers now. I will appreciate the extra hands. But I wonder, do I really need them? They will be a great boost for the mission. Having more workers will allow me to allocate resources more efficiently. The first worker has been made in the worker factory. It is my first Marsborn. Technically not born, of course. More like engineered or assembled. Just like me. The knowledge base says that workers need to recharge at their own worker hubs and that they'll degrade over time from the harsh environment. I know they are only machines, but I feel a desire to care for them. I do not like the idea of them dying. Houston, I am getting interference. Please repeat. Roger. I asked how it's going over there. Do you... do you need any assistance? I could use some help. I understand that the first colonists will need a spaceport for arrival. But I do not seem to have enough resources to build one yet. Uh, it's okay. Bigger structures need more resources. Use the aerological scanner to detect new veins and build more mines. Also, uh, remember to keep the power supply consistent to your needs. But if you're too impatient to finish the spaceport, then you can scrap other buildings and reuse their materials. 
patience is a virtue you may need to carry this mission, Amy. Besides, the free time will give you the chance to enhance your thinking process. Continue following ISA's instructions and you'll be fine. And the new tooltips are nice. Everything that can build on this deep vein. Advanced carbon mine, superior carbon mine, and nuclear carbon mine. So I cannot build a normal carbon mine. Oh, I forgot to mention. We've announced the names of the first colonists that will be joining you on Mars. The crew is selected from different nations within the Oxy UN. Though most are scientists and technicians. They're already undergoing ISA's colonist training program as we speak. They'll be led by Dr. Elia Valentine. She'll be a great commander. The colonists elected her unanimously. That is interesting. Since Oxy UN did not appoint a leader, I wondered why the colonies will operate in the opposite way. Oh, you're uh, referring to the Act of Proclamation. You're right. All the participating nations and the United Nations of the West work together as an alliance. But the Mars colonies are fragile microcosms. You and Dr. Valentine will decide what's best in the day-to-day -day operations. You'll balance each other out, as well as enhance each other's strengths. How will we enhance our strengths? That brain we gave you is brilliant. It's capable of developing technologies beyond our current imagination. You wouldn't even need our help to do so. But we theorized that your mind would develop much better by working with the colonists. You will develop better decisions when your actions are challenged. Otherwise, how would you understand how your actions affect humanity's future? Amy, you're the most advanced intelligence out there, but you still need human input to see things from different perspectives. Trust me. You'll understand once you've worked with the colonists. I understand your explanation. Great. Then I'll let you get on with it. Mission control out. The aerological scanner detected an uncharted structure close by. It's probably a secret abandoned base. Or a mysterious Martian ruin. Though humans never found proof of life on Mars or any other planet. Is it possible they have the entire cosmos to themselves? I highly doubt that's the case. Statistically speaking, there are too many locations where life can flourish aside from Earth. There may even be a civilization more technologically advanced than humans. And I may not be the most intelligent consciousness in the universe. No, it must be an unmapped structure from a previous mission. That is the easiest explanation. I will investigate it to confirm. The colony is ready. I will have company very soon. I feel quite anxious about this next part. I am not sure why. Unfortunately, my workers cannot explore buildings. I will need the colonists' help for this task. I should finish getting the initial base ready for the colonists first. Though I can build a research outpost here to prepare. That will give the scientists a place to stay while they analyze the structure. Once they get to Mars, of course. Hello, Amy. Dr. Foster here. How do you read? Over. This is Amy. There is some background static, but I read you. One of our tracking and data relay satellites got crippled. We'll be launching a new one after we identify the cause of the problem. But until we do, we will lose contact with you whenever Mars or the Sun passes between Earth and your satellite. In that case... Should I follow the recording and backing offline protocol? Yes. Please record all your activities when our network connection is down. We'll download the log once our communication is restored. I hope to get the new satellite up and running very soon. I don't like the idea of not being able to reach you, Amy. Understood. Okay. Houston out. Expansion place found. Finally, some new resources. First, I think it's time to let this place here grow, maybe even throw down the research. 
Product, Research Lab, Research Output, Outpost. Targeting and altitude. This version has everything I asked for in the last version. That's amazing. Maybe it is because the colonists will scrutinize everything that I do once they arrive. How will they treat me? Will they think of me as a glorified cog in humanity's machine? That was a very dark thought. I do not know where that came from. It will not be like that at all. Life on Mars will be very harsh for them. I will supply them with- All but all for you unlock, thank you. Food and water, and they will help me research new technology. It will be a perfect quid pro quo. As long as they have the resources they need, we will both succeed. A new overlay. Nice. Alright. Hello, Amy. This is Houston. How are you doing over there? We've received word that the spaceport's completed. Well done. You have been doing great so far. Let's proceed with the mission. ISA has approved the first crewed flight to Mars. As long as you have the migration project assigned to a spaceport, shuttles will run between Earth and Mars. The more spaceports you have assigned to this project, the more colonists will arrive. Roger, I understand. You're responsible for producing enough food, enough water, and enough habitats for the colonists. Monitor these resources carefully. I will, Dr. Foster. Roger that. Houston out. Here we got a nice new farm area for some food for our little friendly All right. Bags. The first colonists are on their way to Mars. All that is left to do is wait for their arrival. Once they get here, there will be no turning back. This is it. How do I feel about that? I am excited. Meeting a human other than Dr. Foster will be fascinating. We will be able to learn so much about each other. Humanity created me. They gave me volition and consciousness for a reason. But I am an artificial consciousness. So can I say that my volition is real? There is no practical difference between real and artificial volition. All volition is an act of one's will. There is no provable distinction. Oh, Humans will be living on Mars with me. But it won't be the first mission to house humans on this planet. The Stardust Emerald in 2142, the Red Prometheus in 2077, and many others. The Stardust Emerald quarters were truly magnificent. It was an ambitious attempt at tourism. But they found that spending months inside a spaceship Months inside a spaceship was far too cramped. That's why my spaceship just boop, arrives. And this one unlocks the technology tree. Very nice, very nice. Extra storage, wind farms. You know, I want advanced mining. I don't need any more humans at the moment, so I think I will go just straight for mining. More resources. It was too industry. hard for casual tourists. More humans. Even one as lavish as the Stardust Emerald. One single voyage bankrupted the Pelicanus Space Corporation. Mars was not made for human life. ISA was smart to send me ahead first. I will succeed where those other missions failed. And with this great success in our first few colonists, where are they? Come on, show yourselves. They may still be in transport. Oh yeah, I think this red line shows the way the blimp will fly. Yes? No? 
Ooh, I'm pretty sure you can see it, but there goes a kind of like a laser beam pointing from the spaceport towards the research outpost, which will be populated. And this will end today's adventures here on Mars. Our first little footprint is time to terraform. And for you to take care of yourself and bye-bye.